Hello and welcome back to the Littlest Petcast. I'm your host, James, and today we are going to be looking at the episode Frenemies. So, uh, it begins with Blythe, uh, Penny Ling, Zoe, and Pepper looking through a picture book of the pet's first days at the Littlest Pet Shop. In Zoe's first day, she is singing in her picture. And then uh, we turn the page and we see uh, Penny Ling's first day where she's grasping onto her owner out of nervousness of like being somewhere new for the first time. So b- because we do see Penny Ling's owner in this, uh, I do have to mention something because like to me it was like the funniest thing so um like you probably know like a while ago i perused the tv tropes page for littlest pet shop i keep bringing it up and that's where i got the idea where blythe is a mutant but then i built on that where everyone's a mutant. Well, not everyone, but, you know, a lot of people and pets in this universe. So, uh, during those findings, uh, I saw that, like, in the Littlest Pet Shop comics they had that were based on this cartoon, there was a comic in which someone drew Linkara in the background and that uh, Linkara noticed that on his show. So uh, when I told my brother about that, he was wondering in what context was he drawn in and I wasn't sure because I hadn't seen either um, the comic itself or Linkara's review and I still haven't. Um, actually, hold on, I might look that up. But I'm gonna finish the story first. So, yeah, he was asking what the context was. I told him, I didn't know. And then he was wondering, is he Penny Ling's owner? And again, I said, I wasn't sure. And then he said, all right, Penny Ling. I gotta go make fun of the comics industry for a little bit. You stay here for a while. (laughs) 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 Sorry about that. Now, what you didn't hear is me continuing to laugh for a while. Oh god, that that is like the funniest thing to me. And <laughs> hold on, I'm doing it again. Um, okay, okay, I think I'm good now. So I just looked up the actual context, and it's just him buying a comic book, and also he's in the foreground. It is very prominent. In, in the panel he's in. So that's interesting to note. Ba- back on track, hopefully. Uh, Penny Ling uh, is reminiscing about this. Uh, oh yeah, uh, the reason I brought it up is because Linkara is not Penny Ling's owner. It is like a burly black man. <laughs> so that's that's the entire reason I brought that up. Anyway, Penny Ling is reminiscing about uh, her first day at LPS and says she remembers it like it was yesterday, but Blythe points out that tomorrow is actually the one-year anniversary of when she started, which I believe makes Penny Ling the last of the group to join before Blythe got there, which kind of makes sense because she was also the last person to be mentioned in Zoe's song. Although I don't know if there's any actual correlation to that. 
or causation rather, there's some correlation, maybe not entirely causation. So, um, oh yeah, this also means that Blythe has been there for less than a year at this point, but mm, it's not necessarily important. They point out that a year is kind of a big deal and that they should celebrate. And Pepper and Zoe say the same thing. They should have a party for Penny Ling. Penny Ling uh, pretends to reject it, but then immediately goes full in on the party idea because she really, really wants it. Pepper and Zoe both want to plan the party uh, separately, and Blythe lets them do it together. And uh, Penny Ling isn't so sure about that, but Blythe reassures her that it'll be fine. So, um, and then uh, Blythe is grooming Penny Ling in the grooming station outside of the day camp area and is saying that Zoe's style and Pepper's humor will come together for a great party. Uh, Penny Ling kind of hopes that's the case and Vinny overhears them talking and rushes over tripping on the rug um, he gets caught up in some pet toys and a box of kibble and says he wants to dance for Penny Ling as the entertainment for the party because entertainment is his middle name but Penny Ling says that she thought he said his middle name was Alfonso but uh, Lenny says that that's not important right now. And he wants to try out a new move, like the Vinny Carena. Like he sings like, hey, Vinny Carena. But there's background music playing that's not the Macarena music. So I think that's how they're getting around it. So, um, while he's dancing the Vinnie Carena, uh, Vinnie trips on some dog food and knocks over a tower of cans that is next to him. Vinnie maneuvers around and, uh, Blythe and Penny are in shock at what's about to happen. And he grabs his tail and all of the cans fall. Blythe and Penny ask if uh, Vinny is all right. Vinny says he's fine and his tail is also fine because he grabbed it before it could get hit by a can. But when he walks out from behind all of the fallen cans, we see his tail is detached and everyone is shocked. Uh, so Blythe looks it up and says that uh, according to an animal medical site. Geckos lose their tail sometimes when a predator grabs it as a defense mechanism. But Vinny says that he grabbed it, so he made himself lose his tail. But uh, Penny Ling says that Vinny looks cute without the tail. Okay. Okay, now, now we're gonna start going into weird territory in a little bit and by a little bit I mean right about now because I am not might be finding myself in the middle of my own shipping war where I'm on both sides because in the past, I've pointed out various things that might make Russell and Penny a good couple. This is still really weird to say, and it's about to get weird. <laughs> but now, between, like, Vinny insisting he dance... Uh, for Penny and Penny saying that Vinny's cute without the tail I might 
be swayed into thinking that maybe the real couple is Vinny and Penny. That's still weird to say. I don't, I don't know. Like, I mean, there's also that, like, thing with their story in Eve of Destruction. And, like, Madame, Madame Palm is seeing this. Oh, oh, I just realized. If Madame Palm is a shipping fanatic and Zoe is a shipping fanatic, do Madame Palm and uh, Zoe get into ship wars between each other on top of, like, the wars they get into because they're show dogs? That that sounds really fun, and I would like to see that. But back to this thing. Maybe? It's still really weird to say, but uh, there's some evidence for both. Uh, why am I in the crossfire of a shipping war I created myself? Makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. Uh, like, I, don't, I didn't even want to, like, ship in this show. Unless it's Blythe and Josh. And hey, Zoe has my back on that one, so it's not all weird. It's not at all weird because they're both humans, but I'm I'm now in the crossfire of wondering whether to ship a hedgehog and a panda or a gecko and a panda, and both options are just weird. I don't know why this happens. Like, is it because other animal shows have animal like other shows with talking animals sometimes have like cross breeding couples and like since I watched some TV like that that that's that I can think that at all maybe but I just don't know what is wrong with me that I, I'm doing this. So back to the episode. Um, Vinny starts crying because his tail gave him balance while dancing and he's lost that now and says he can't dance. Russell wonders if they can't just attach it back but then it crumbles in his hands and Russell said he wasn't expecting that Russell that okay before I get into this uh this scene just has like a couple weird things which I'll just describe the scene and I will go into the weird things one by one after the scene is over. <laughs> so Russell then remarks that it's too bad that there's not a doctor around. So Sunil says that his parents wanted him to be a doctor. But then Russell places him in charge of that based solely on that because no one else's parents wanted them to be a doctor, which they all confirm. So Russell rushes Sunil and Vinny out for doctor stuff. And yeah, this is this is where things get a bit weird. So let's begin. First, it's a little racist to make the character who hails from India's parents want him to be a doctor. I know doctor is a glamorous profession, but that's still kind of a weird racist profile that this show has set up for Sunil. 
I mean, yeah, no, that's that's just kind of racist. Uh, so second, since when can pets even become doctors? Like, like the the first thing like is racist, but it also doesn't make sense because how can mongoose think that their little mongoose can become a doctor? It, like, I don't think we're that far on the, like, timeline quite yet. We're at the point where some animals can be actors more than, uh, like, we see now. Yeah, there's, like, so many animal actors and, like, famous animals doing stuff that you'd think we're in the 90s again in this show. And, uh, lastly, since when do the pets know the word doctor? Because remember, in What Did You Say?, they insist on taking Blaith to the vet, not the doctor. They didn't even know the word doctor. It's possible that Blaith could have taught them the word doctor, but then why would Sunil's parents want him to be a doctor? It doesn't make sense. Like, like it, I know... I know, like, both of these are just jokes that you can just casually throw out the window, but, like, like, it's when, like, you, I don't think you just throw them out the window, because, like, as jokey as this show can get, this also has, like, a semblance of a serious nature to it, and that's kind of weird that, like, yeah, no, this is basically, like, the problem i like, been talking about since the beginning. Like, the meshing of Phineas and Ferb and My Little Pony. Like, 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 I wouldn't have this much of a problem with, like, two throwaway gags. Like, in Phineas and Ferb that contradict each other. Because, like, it's, it's, like supposed to be wild and out there and funny but when you're mixing it with like like sentimental and serious values like i don't think throwing away jokes is the best approach to joke making all right now that we've got that out of the way zoe comes in wearing an elegant dress, sarcastically remarking about Sunil being a doctor. Pepper walks out just as a cowgirl clown, and is also being sarcastic about um, like the prospect of Sunil being a doctor. Blythe asks what's up with the costumes, and Pepper and Zoe say it's for Penny Ling's party, but each of them seem to have a different idea and they've both planned it out individually and uh Blythe says one at a time explain what's going on Pepper first Pepper's plan is a clown rodeo her plan includes a wild west theme buckets of confetti to throw party games like rubber chicken lasso and a pie-throwing contest where everyone gets to throw a pie at Zoe. Zoe doesn't like that and is taken aback by it. Meanwhile, Blythe asks Penny Ling what she thinks because it's her party. And uh, But before uh, she answers, Zoe blindsides her with her own idea. It'll be a fancy party where everyone's dressed the nines. And we go to a fantasy of what that would be like as well. And Sunil is wearing a purple dress and says, I look terrible in lilac. And I might have to agree. It, it doesn't really 
look too good because like he's like a turquoisey blue or like like a light shade of blue and like a light shade of purple on that doesn't mesh terribly well so um uh zoe then continues by saying that like the tablecloths will match the napkins will match the plates will match the drapes and then that there will be 50 types of tea from chewy chew toy blend to insect berry brew to penny ling's favorite bamboo chai and lastly there'll be a dunk a skunk donkey boom dunk donkey booth dunking booth a dunking booth where guests will get to dunk Pepper. Pepper asks, uh, what does a dunking booth have to do with a fancy tea party? But Zoe says, nothing. I just want to see you get dunked. Pepper admits that that's actually kind of funny, but not as funny as a rodeo clown party. Uh, Zoe says to let Penny decide, and Penny's a tad nervous, and Blythe says that she thinks they're both good, but Pepper and Zoe take that as vindication for their ideas only and not hear what Blythe is saying even after she reiterates it and says that they need to come together to plan a party. Pepper and Zoe look a little nervous and Blythe asks if they can do that. Zoe says... I'm game if she is. And then Pepper says, game is my middle name. And then Penny Ling says, I thought you told me your middle name was Mildred. So then we cut to outside the day camp area where Sunil surmises that they can use a rubber band to hold down the straw to act as Vinny's new tail. They try it, but... The rubber band is too tight on Vinny and he can't breathe. And then it snaps and goes flying around and almost hits them, but uh, they dodge it. Buttercream then comes over and uh, wonders what's going on. So uh, the guys explain Vinny's tail situation. And then Buttercream thinks of Vinny having a cookie tail attached with frosting. So, um, they do that, and when it gets put on, Vinny says that it feels a little weird, because, like, it's frosting on pretty much his butt, and it just kind of feels weird. <laughs> but then, uh, they ask Vinny to do a dance, and he does, and it seems like he's getting a hang of it. But then Buttercream eats the cookie tail. So the rest of the pets there ask why Buttercream did that. And then Buttercream explains, but she does like her thing. And then just resets before they tried out the cookie tail because she suggests it again. So, just how zonked out on sweets is buttercream that she resets this time? Like, like after, like, the other times it's happened, she's at least focused in the present, but this time she just resets. So then we cut to... Blythe's room, and Blythe and Zoe are going through tablecloths to select, and Zoe lands on pink, and Blythe sarcastically says, never would have guessed. Zoe asks for a floral pattern to be stitched in, and Blythe agrees, uh, but also asks if Zoe and Pepper have agreed on it. Zoe says, like, they have, kind of, and she heads back to the dumbwaiter where they meet pepper and things are a bit tense it's really obviously they have not conversed on this so um 
like once Zoe heads down the dumb waiter, uh, Pepper goes to Blythe and asks her to fix up her clown costume to make it more westerny. Blythe also agrees to that, but also asks if they've agreed on something. And Pepper nervously says that they have, but it's very clear they haven't. So then, uh, back down with the adventures of Dr. Sunil, uh, Russell puts a doctor's coat on Sunil, and Sunil says that he's not a doctor. Russell says that that's the problem. You haven't become a doctor because you don't think you can. Vinny also points out that he's a mongoose, which goes into my thing from before. Uh, so I don't, I don't think animals can be like doctors yet. I think we're heading down that timeline, but we're not there yet. So, Russell says that that's not the point. And then he tells Sunil that he needs to tell himself that he is the doctor in order to psych himself up to be a good doctor. So, Sunil starts while Russell goes to get some stuff. That could be a tale. And uh, it, it, it works, and he starts believing he's a doctor. And it goes into a fantasy where he he is a doctor and he is assisted by Russell and Minka and uh, Minka puts a glove on his head instead of uh, on his hands so Sunil asks for his medical instrument and then Minka hands him a trombone which he rejects an electric guitar which he rejects and a tuba, which he finds perfect for the situation. Meanwhile, in the observation deck, Sunil's parents are taking pictures and saying how proud they are of their son, the doctor. Vinny asks them to stop, and Sunil asks them to calm down because this is, you know, a surgery. Sunil's parents agree they still take pictures anyway. And then Sunil plays the tuba, and Vinny is wondering what's up with that. But then Sunil asks him to be quiet, as this is the most delicate part. He then plays the tuba over Vinny's head and says he's done. Vinny is wondering what happened, but then he checks, and he got a peacock tail. And everyone is praising Sunil. So, yeah, I just realized as I was saying that out loud how none of that really makes sense. But I'm okay with that because it's like a psych-up fantasy where, like, like you do, it doesn't need to make sense. You just throw out the rules of reality and, like, charge forward into victory. That's like, you know, that kind of anime-ish thing that happens sometimes. But, you know, it is weird to describe, but I guess not necessarily weird to see, unlike, well, unlike some other things in this episode. <laughs> so then uh, Sunil comes out of the fantasy with, like, pride and the ability to think he can do it and asks for serious medical equipment but Russell comes back with just some junk he found around the shop uh, Sunil quietly repeats that he is the doctor and believes to himself that he can do it so we cut to a montage of different tales for Vinny the pencil tail doesn't work because he trips and lands on a ball and rolls around with the pencil and it's drawing on the floor and it ends when uh, he crashes into something and the Mona Lisa is what has been drawn with big Littlest Pet Shop eyes, of course. And then uh, 
the tape measure tail doesn't work because as Vinny dances a bit, uh, Russell is holding the tape measure out and he slips and the tape measure uh, rolls back in and crashes into Vinny. And finally, the orange soda tail doesn't work because while Vinny's dancing, it shakes and explodes and sends him rocketing. So then we cut back to inside the shop and Zoe is setting up teacups. But then a loud thumping happens, and Zoe protects the teacups from shattering. Meanwhile, Pepper is rolling a block of hay over, and then it stops moving for a second, and we see that it's Zoe who is stopping it. Uh, Zoe wonders what the hay is for, and Pepper answers that it's for the party. But Zoe insists that they're doing the tea party, but Pepper still insists that they're doing the rodeo. They both laugh at each other's ideas and uh, Penny Ling is watching this and feels sad and then goes to explain to Blythe what's happening. But Blythe has no worries about this, even though multiple times throughout this episode, there were periods to be concerned by and it's still happening. It keeps happening. I told you about Zoe and Pepper, bro. I warned you. It keeps happening. Anywho, Penny Ling hopes that Blythe is right and that the party will be good. But Vinny comes up dejected about not having his tail and says he can't dance for the party which only serves to upset Penny Ling even more. Uh, and after Penny Ling goes back down, uh, Blythe asks Vinny if he's even tried dancing without his tail. Vinny says, what's the point? Without his tail, he knows he can't dance. But Blythe says that dancing doesn't come from your tail, it comes from your heart. So Blythe grabs a pair of old doll shoes, puts some thumbtacks into them to make Vinny sized tap shoes, which wouldn't that hurt? I mean, like, shouldn't that hurt? Like, just putting it on? Because, like, the thumbtack would still be sticking up through the shoe. Like, I mean, Vinny has webbed feet, but in an enclosed space, those, like, separated tendrils become more closer, so it's more likely that he'll be get hit by the spike, but I guess not. But, um, anyway, Vinny tries them on and starts tap dancing and liking it. And liking how it feels to dance without his tail. And Blythe notes that without his tail, Vinny is really good. And Vinny notices this as well because he says that his tail was holding him back from being an exceptional dancer. We then cut back to the party planning as uh, Pepper is riding like a... I mean, it's a, they say it's a mechanical bull in the in the episode, but it's not really mechanical. It's more like one of those things you see at like parks where you just jump on it and it rocks back and forth. Not not a not a seesaw, but like like a spring uh thing with like with like a duck or like like a car or in this case a bull on it or bull design and you just rock back and forth i don't know what those are called so uh yeah the the spring bull or whatever it's called keeps knocking the ground zoe asks her to stop because her sandwich platter is falling over and uh pepper says that no one will bother because they'll be having so much fun over at her party. 
And then Pepper flies off the bull and lands on Zoe's side, which at this point I will note that the room is split in two with a red tape border like it's that episode of I Love Lucy or any other sitcom from like the 50s to 70s that did that. Or even that one episode of Friends that had the two parties, which I believe was just called the one with the two parties. And, um, I mean, they didn't have red tape. They just had, like, two different things across the hall. So, either way, uh, Zodio asks, who would ever come to a rodeo clown party? And Pepper says, only the people who want to have fun. You know, fun, the thing you're supposed to have at a party. Zoe then says that if her party isn't fun, Pepper's party is even less fun, which riles Pepper up, and they go to the middle with the tape and stare down each other. But uh, Vinny interrupts it, saying both parties will be fun because he can dance and then Vinny proceeds to dance with the both of them and they're both impressed with it and they both say he'll dance at my party so then um we cut to later when everything is set up and pepper welcomes people to her rodeo clown land and zoe welcomes people to her high society so, uh, Minka, Vinny, Sunil, and Russell are perplexed by this setup, and Pepper lassos uh, Sunil and Russell over to her side, gives them clothes to put on, and takes out some lipstick, presumably to draw stuff on them. Uh, Minka and Vinny look on, but they are taken in by the smell of Zoe's sandwiches. Uh, Blythe walks in, and Zoe and Pepper both invite her to their party, and Blythe is annoyed at this because, as she's explained multiple times, uh, they were supposed to work together. Zoe and Pepper say that the other one didn't hear that Blythe liked their idea. But Blythe again says she liked both of them. And that again, they forgot they were supposed to be working together for Penny Ling. Which she walks into the room and Pepper invites her into Rodeo Clownland and gives her a cowgirl hat. But before Penny Ling makes it over the line, Zoe stops her and says she'll miss the queen. Penny Ling is excited to see the queen. I'll end up on tattoo. But Zoe reveals that the queen is right here and puts a tiara on her head removing the cowgirl hat penny ling is mystified by this and says i'm the queen zoe then rolls out some red carpet for her and as they are walking down zoe shows off more weird varieties of tea for pets which there's tea for pets no I mean, I, I know I went over this earlier, but it still weirds me out. So there's pet tea, pet TV, pet actors, and maybe pet doctors now, but not quite. So the other varieties of tea that Zoe shows off are flowery flywing, liver hibiscus, and decaf banana. Now, I don't drink tea, but I've played a lot of Professor Layton, and I don't think tea comes caffeinated, at least not naturally. I think something has to be done to put the caffeine in there. Although, I guess something has to be done to put the caffeine in. Well, maybe not for soda uh because there are some uncaffeinated sodas yeah maybe maybe there are caffeinated teas like naturally because 
maybe maybe caffeine's a naturally occurring thing because it's found in coffee beans, I think. Or do they add that later? Now, now I'd, I'm now I'm an idiot. This is this is one puzzle I cannot solve because I know jack about tea. Ah, uh, but professor, y- y'all the tea expert. My whole life is a lie, Luke. <laughs> Anywho, Zoe then shows off a cake with a layer of bamboo greens just for her. And Penny is amazed by all of this. But then Pepper takes her to Rodeo Clown Land by giving her a piggyback ride. So, at this point in note-taking, I came across something interesting. I misspelled Clownland, and it flagged me on that. But it has not flagged me on Clownland in general. So I looked it up, and Clownland is real. It is a place located in, and I'm sorry if I butcher this, Arcure, France. Uh, that's how the pronunciation guide I found kind of says it. It looks like Arquez, like Arquettes, but I guess it's Arcure. So from what I gathered... It's like a children's fun area, I guess. Uh, I mean, like, like I, I live in Wisconsin, and in, in in Appleton, there's like a children's museum, which like is like a thing where like kids can go around and have fun and stuff. And I kind of imagine Clownland like that, but you know, with clowns. Uh. Pepper puts the cowgirl hat back on top of Penny Ling's head and, uh, like, puts it over the tiara so you can see it still. It also gives her a clown nose. And Pepper says, even queens need a little fun. So, uh, for this fun, she provides hay rides, pushed by Sunil and Russell, lasso chicken, and an anniversary cupcake shot out of cannon into Penny Ling's face. Penny Ling is enjoying the fun of Rodeo Clownland. But then Zoe and Pepper start playing a tug of war with Penny and then mocking each other about their interests. Penny Ling is really sad about this and she takes off her tiara and cowgirl hat and nose and goes to hide in the hydrant slide. So Blythe sees all of this and decides enough is enough. Blythe then uh, says that uh, it's time to play a party game, which she says everyone can play, but when everyone uh, goes to play, she rescinds it to only Zoe and Pepper can play. And Zoe and Pepper are excited to play whatever game this is. Pepper wonders if it's musical chairs, and Zoe wonders if it's a piñata. Blythe explains that the game is that they have to point out the best qualities in one another. They ask what kind of game is that, and Blythe says it's her kind. Good job, Blythe. You are handling this really maturely for a teenager. Even if you constantly ignored Penny Ling's worries about exactly this, you're you're pulling ahead and um, fixing it, at least. So, good on ya. So, Zoe starts by saying Pepper is lucky, and Pepper wonders what's up with that. But Zoe points out that Pepper is so charming and funny that that's why people like her. But Pepper says that, like, it's Zoe that everyone likes because she's so beautiful and stylish. And Pepper wishes she had that kind of pizzazz. Zoe sees it 
more as panache, but Blythe gets her back into the game. Zoe then says that she is surprised that Pepper notices this stuff. Uh, and Pepper says back that that's why she kind of teases her because she's just a bit jealous that Zoe has all of that stuff. And Zoe says back to that that she might get mad on the outside, but inside she's laughing because Pepper is hilarious. And then Zoe and Pepper hug it out and the rest of the pets, Sans, Penny, and Vinny, go, aww, when they see this. So Pepper and Zoe realize that they let Penny Ling down and go to apologize. They uh, they meet her at the hydrant and they say they're sorry and they agree that whatever Penny picks, they'll go for it. Uh, Penny goes for both options and has the tiara cowgirl hat on and nose on again. So she comes out happy and everyone cheers all right uh i'm gonna actually get back on a tangent i went on a few episodes ago like specifically how sometimes the gender um difference is are played to good effect like i think this is kind of a good example of that as well because like we have Zoe's party which is very traditionally feminine and then we have Pepper's party which like is not really traditionally feminine in style I guess but like Pepper is shown to like the theme and so is Penny and like like everyone likes the theme of you know the wild wild west but like Zoe's more enamored with her more feminine idea and like like the crux of their argument in this episode isn't like really which idea is better but like which one of them should you know get the credit for planning this amazing party and Blythe constantly reminds them that it should just be both of them but they get lost in their own grandeur and like like Penny Ling serves as like a great middle person to this because like I mean like we've seen examples of her being very feminine like very traditionally feminine and very non-traditionally feminine um but like like you you can't say that any of these characters aren't female they're just female in their own way you know and like like yeah this this party starts as like kind of a divergence of like more feminine versus less feminine but then it it comes together to be like feminine in general whether traditionally feminine or not because you know it's for a female being planned by two of her female friends to just celebrate the fact that they're friends and they're here. And you know what? It doesn't matter what gender norms you like or adhere to or go against because, like, I love being here with you. And you are you. And you can like high society and rodeo clownland in the same capacity and just not lose any feminine points because you're you're so good. I like that about you. 
and like like yeah it's it really like makes sense too because like like it also like kind of justifies uh zoe and pepper's close relationship because like at, at the beginning of the episode their ideas could not be more different and they still aren't any more different but it doesn't matter because like feminine traditionally or feminine not traditionally they're still friends because they like each other and it takes Blythe to force it out of them and just go for it okay uh I'm going to pocket that again, but this is a really good topic that this show sometimes explores. Sometimes it explores it in not a great way, but overall, I'd say it's really good at it. So once the party gets started, Blythe is ready to get go along with the dance from Vinny, but Vinny says he doesn't want to dance because he got his tail back. And everyone is amazed, but Vinny is distraught. He wonders why Blythe didn't tell him this would happen, and Blythe said she thought he knew, but he didn't even know his tail would come off in the first place, Blythe. Like, I mean, how do you, how does, like, this, how, how do you think that he would know it just grows back? I mean, technically he should know, because this should be instinctual in him. But he doesn't. But he really should. Like... Okay, it's it's not, like, a matter of where animals are on this weird timeline of, like, becoming more human-like. Because humans, like, kind of know their instincts as well. Like, I mean, like, humans generally know that they're curious and, like, adaptable and stuff like like animals that have different instincts should know kind of what those instincts are and like like a gecko losing its tail isn't a learned behavior it's an instinctual behavior and like it uh, like see that this is this is this is what I mean. Like we we have this like amazing like feminism thing. But then we have Vinny being so stupid he doesn't know his tail can A come off and B grows back. Like th- this is where the problem lies in the show. This is this is why I am doing the podcast. There are a lot of reasons I'm doing the podcast, but this this is just one of them. So then Sunil says, as a pretend doctor, I should have known Gecko's tails grow back. Should you though? Like it doesn't make sense that it would. So, uh, Vinny is still down about this, but Penny Ling cheers Vinny up and says that, uh, you know, she thought you were a good dancer before, and that she'll be really disappointed if she doesn't get the birthday dance she was promised. Which loops me back into the the weird shipping war I'm having with myself. Because, I don't know... I don't know. I mean, as long as I'm on the topic, I did think about mentioning shipping Zoe and Pepper 
uh in the like scene where they were highlighting each other's good points but i decided hey let's just like wh- why why can't girls just be that complimentary to each other and just be friends about it i mean i don't know what i should do cuz again i'm not a lesbian or a girl so like if if you ship it good for you i just i just need more evidence that it's more than friendship i'm not counting it out i'm just saying more evidence is required that like they're just they're really close friends and and that that the, this episode demonstrates that like I went over that already. I woo. This episode's been going for a long time. This is probably going to turn out to be the longest episode, but we're almost done. Anyway, uh, so Vinny determines that Penny Ling is right and that the show must go on. So Blythe uh, introduces Vinny and his new tale. As a dynamic dance duo. So, um, Vinny does a show tune style song about his new tale. And, you know, it's a fine little musical number. You know, it's, it's, it accurately represents, like, the style it's going for. It's not, I mean, it's not one of my favorite songs in the series, but, you know, it's fine. And also, uh, he keeps bumping into things a lot during the number as well. Because, you know, he has his tail back and his tail makes him a little more clumsy. But uh, no matter, because everyone cheers at the end. And, um, like, they're all glad that Vinny has his tail back. And, um, you know, like, he's dancing and they're all glad that this party turned out great, even though it was kind of train wrecky at first. And uh, at the end, Zoe and Pepper agree on how well the party turned out. And then Penny Ling shoots them both with the cupcake cannon to have a little fun of her own. And, you know, they, they enjoy it because it's her party. She can shoot you in the face with cupcakes if she wants to. <laughs> Uh, that <laughs> uh. okay so I think I've said everything I wanted to say about this episode during the episode like it's a it's a pretty good episode Although, I mean, I might not have noticed that as much until I did this podcast because I didn't, I didn't really watch this one a lot. But still, it's a really good episode. Like, but it also like demonstrates the problem I've been describing since the beginning, as I've said before. Like, there's the really serious like rant I went on. And then there's just, like, the other weird rants I've went on. So, I mean, for those of you who like ranty episodes, uh, this is your jam. But uh, I think I will close off this episode here. So uh, that should do it for this episode of The Littlest Petcast. Be sure to leave a comment on Shout Engine on Apple Podcast, on the Google Play Store, and wherever else RSS feeds go when they leave their pandas behind to stand atop the fourth wall. Thanks for listening, and be sure to tune in to the next episode, Blythe's Pet Project. See you then.
Okay, so as I've mentioned before, uh, Littlest Pet Shop is a prequel to My Gym Partner's A Monkey in the sense that the animals in Littlest Pet Shop are somewhat human and the animals in uh, My Gym Partner's A Monkey are a little more human. And uh, in My Gym Partner's A Monkey, Adam Lyon is selected to be a catalyst for um, an experiment to see if humans and animals can truly mix. Now, uh, I know what you're thinking. What would happen if, uh, like, Adam wins or loses? I'm not so sure about what would happen uh, if uh, Adam wins. Well, okay, I'm assuming there's some form of coexistence. And they're just, you know coexisting and stuff but an even more clearer answer to one of the lose conditions is Zootopia so here's my thinking Littlest Pet Shop comes first and then My Gym Partner's a Monkey and then from there, we get a timeline split between, like, a win condition and some lose conditions. One of the lose conditions being Zootopia. And I thought the Grand Unified Theory was nonsense. But split timelines, that's where it's at.